We will like to welcome you on briefings in global affairs, international relations, and geopolitics. This hour in perspective. Kenya to join BRICS and dump the U.S. dollar with new BRICS currency launch. Let's explore this in more detail. Kenya's President William Ruto delivered a speech calling for African countries to ditch the U.S. dollar for international trade. The speech was met with applause from lawmakers as the country seeks to join BRICS and accept the new currency. Ruto mentioned that Kenya has no reason to pay with the U.S. dollar for trade between African nations. He stressed that their local currency, the Kenyan shilling, should be the preferred tender for cross-border transactions. The president clarified that he is not against the U.S. dollar, but prefers to promote native currencies to strengthen the local economy. Ruto said that the U.S. dollar should be paid for cross-border transactions while conducting business with the U.S. However, for other countries, the Kenyan shilling or the exchequer's local currency should be used. The Kenyan president said that the African Export-Import Bank, Afrexim, is building a platform that would allow traders in Africa to settle payments in local currency. Hence, the U.S. dollar might no longer be a part of the settlements taking place between African countries. If we are selling from Kenya to Djibouti, we have to look for U.S. dollars. How is the dollar part of the trade between Djibouti and Kenya? Today, we're saying African Export-Import Bank has given us a mechanism where traders in our continent can trade in their goods and services, and the bank will settle payments in local currency. That is why Kenya champions the pan-African payments and settlement systems that are done by our own institution, the Afrexim Bank. Ruto also added, why is it necessary for us to buy things from Djibouti and pay in dollars? There's no reason. We are not against the U.S. dollar. We just want to trade much more freely. Let us pay with the dollar what we are buying from the U.S. Let us pay with our currency what we are buying from Djibouti. Nineteen countries also expressed an interest in joining the BRICS group of nations as it prepares to hold an annual summit in South Africa. The emerging markets bloc of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa will meet in Cape Town on June 2 to 3 to discuss its enlargement. Anil Sokol, South Africa's ambassador to the group, said in an interview in the city on Monday. What will be discussed is the expansion of BRICS and the modalities of how this will happen, he said. Thirteen countries have formally asked to join and another six have asked informally. We are getting applications to join every day. China initiated the conversation about expansion when it was BRICS chair last year, as the world's second biggest economy tries to build diplomatic clout to counter the dominance of developed countries in the United Nations. The proposed enlargement triggered concern among other members that their influence will be diluted, especially if Beijing's close allies are admitted. China's gross domestic product is more than twice the size of all four other BRICS members combined. The foreign ministers from the five member states have all confirmed they'll attend the discussions in June, Sukul said. In addition to its membership, they will also discuss hot spots, including Sudan, where a ceasefire appeared to take hold on Tuesday after 10 days of conflict. Since its formation as the BRIC in 2006, the group has only added one new member, South Africa in 2010. Saudi Arabia and Iran are among the countries who formally asked to join, Sokol said in February. Other countries that have expressed interest in joining include Argentina, the United Arab Emirates, Algeria, Egypt, Bahrain, and Indonesia, along with two nations from East Africa and one from West Africa, which he didn't identify. The creation of a BRICS currency will be one of the main topics up for discussion when the group of five emerging nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, meet in Johannesburg in August, South African officials said this week. Russia has been spearheading the push for the creation of a joint currency, and Brazil has also thrown its support behind the idea. China, too, is in favor of challenging what its Ministry of Foreign Affairs calls U.S. dollar hegemony. 
South Africa's foreign minister, Nalidi Pandar, has said a move away from the dollar could empower other countries, but also noted the project is challenging. It's a matter we must discuss and discuss properly. I don't think we should always assume the idea will work, because economics is very difficult, and you have to have regard to all countries. Iza Malanga, chief economist for Rand Merchant Bank, a South African investment bank, told VOA he thought the idea that a BRICS currency could append the dollar's dominance anytime soon was just not founded by any economic fundamentals that we know of. The U.S. dollar has been the world's dominant currency since the end of World War II. Eighty percent of international transactions are conducted in U.S. dollars, and nearly two-thirds of all currency reserves in central banks are in dollars. U.S. capital markets are also the most liquid in the world. South Africa really can't play much of a role. It's a very small open economy with very little reserves, which gets influenced by global factors. China might have a possibility, but the willingness of the Chinese authorities to let the Chinese currency float freely and lose control is close to none, he said. Malanga also noted that given the different economic and political systems of the members of BRICS, it's quite difficult to have a common currency. He said although there has long been talk of a single currency for Africa, an actual economic framework for it is still nowhere to be seen, it's almost impossible. Most likely, he said, would be for individual member states to conduct more bilateral trade using their own currencies as has already happened with Russia and India's trade in oil. South African Reserve Bank Governor Lesa Jokenyago also expressed some skepticism this week, saying that if a single form of legal tender were created by BRICS, it would spur debate about the creation of a central bank and where that would be located. I don't know how we would talk of a currency issued by a block of countries that are in different geographical locations because currencies are national in nature, he said. For the euro area to arrive at that, they had to establish a treaty where the other countries had to all surrender their currencies. However, some economists think a new currency could be a game-changer. BRICS accounts for some 40% of the world's population, and an estimated one-quarter to one-third of global GDP. A number of other countries, including Saudi Arabia and Iran, have also expressed interest in joining BRICS. Writing in Foreign Policy magazine recently, former White House economist Joseph W. Sullivan said that while many practical questions remain unanswered, such a currency really could dislodge the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency of BRICS members. Mikitikiso Kubei, a BRICS specialist at the Pretoria-based research organization, the Institute for Global Dialogue, told VOA that easier and more equitable trade was the main reason BRICS members wanted a common currency. A lot of the countries that BRICS trades with, particularly in the global south, they all share one common challenge, he said. The expense, the cost of actually doing trade, the cost associated with fluctuating exchange rates, the dominance of some currencies over others, and that sort of thing, access to cheap finance, affordable finance for their infrastructure. But Ali Khan Sachu, a political economist based in Nairobi, said he thinks the main reason long-held ideas of a BRICS currency have gained momentum is primarily due to Western sanctions on Russia for the war in Ukraine. The freezing of their reserves, $300 billion, by the Americans and a similar scenario unfolding in Europe, forced the Russians to look for a different payment solution outside the U.S. system, he said. I think it's difficult to underestimate the level of shock that various countries have experienced when Russia's reserves were frozen, he said. China saw that and thought, look, if they can do it to Russia, they can do it to us, he added, noting Beijing, given its current strained relations with Washington, had got on board with the idea very quickly. The Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs recently released a long policy paper entitled U.S. Hegemony and Its Perils, which stated, The hegemony of U.S. dollar is the main source of instability and uncertainty in the world economy. 
The paper also noted Washington's use of sanctions, saying America's economic and financial hegemony has become a geopolitical weapon. Asked how viable a BRICS currency would be, Satchu said there were some impediments. The main hurdles and pitfalls are that there are plenty of interested parties. Constructing a currency is not an easy task. There's a question of how its composition will be constructed. There's a lot of talk about having a commodity-based currency, and therefore, there will be complexities around the weighting of the various commodities, he said, referring to the proposition the currency be tied to oil or gold. Likewise, he said, Beijing has no intention of making China's yuan fully convertible now because they'd lose a lot of control. The hard market reality is that the dollar remains supreme, 80% of trade is conducted in the dollar, the most liquid market in the world. This is really about chipping away at the foundations of the dollar, rather than a decapitation, he said. The Bank of America said last week, in a note that reports of U.S. dollar replacement are greatly exaggerated, echoing Mark Twain's famous quote, reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.